keep checking for that. So if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat uh, and let's get started. All right, so what is Pronto? And Pronto is simply an app that is connected to Canvas and it's really easy and it's fun. Um, it's just a nice little easy thing to do to keep connected with peers and instructors without sharing your phone number. And I have to share with you that um, early on in my teaching career, way before smartphones, even way before I had a cell phone, I had a landline and I would give my phone number out to certain students who I felt like needed some extra support. And I was young and it turned out to be a horrible decision. And I ended up having to change my phone number. So um, I am not a big fan about sharing my phone number with my students. At the same time, I did require students like share your phone number with, with your classmates and make sure you only use this phone number, to, you know, about the class and please don't, you know, please be appropriate with it. And I always felt a little bit funny asking students to do that because sometimes it wouldn't be a good scenario for them either. So one of the things that Pronto is, is it's a way for students to keep in contact with one another where they're using their phones, but they're not having to share their personal information with anyone that they don't want to. So it's a real easy way to keep connected with your peers and other instructors. And you can have a real time chat and record it. You can participate in a group video chat, which is a really wonderful thing. And Steve is going to be sharing about what he does with that today. You can make announcements in Pronto. You can choose a language. Let's say you have students who have a language whose first language is not English. You can add, they can actually choose a message that they'd like their messages to be translated to. You can share files with it. And you can also assign and receive tasks, okay? I also wanna share with you that Pronto is rather new. I mean, it's been around for a few years, but it's rather new and it's constantly being updated. And with this pandemic, um, there's been a big uptick with the usage of Pronto among schools. And so they're constantly improving it. And I'm part of a group where we meet regularly to discuss Pronto, its usage and, and what we'd like to see, how we'd like to see it be different and updated. Okay, so why use Pronto? We already have Canvas, we already have Zoom. And let me just share with you that Pronto is not a substitute for Zoom. At first, I thought that it could be a substitute for Zoom. It's not. Zoom is better for a full class experience. And so Zoom is an important tool that we use for video conferencing with larger numbers of students. But there are reasons why to use Pronto because there are certain things that it offers that neither Canvas nor Zoom offer. One of the big things that students can do is they can use it. They agency is built in with them because they can use it independently of their professors. So I have on my phone, I have it set up where I ask for push notifications from Pronto. Some teachers do not want push notifications, but I like them. And the reason why I like them is that I know how to ignore push notifications when I don't want to take a look at them. But it also notifies me, you know, when I, there's times I'll take a quick look and I'm like, oh yeah, this, thank goodness this student asked this question. This was really important and I needed to know it now and I'm not online and it lets me know. So, and what I've noticed it, is that students will ask and answer questions of one another that have nothing to do with me. Um, the other thing that I like about Pronto is that it's very intuitive. Students can learn how to use it easily. And even before I give students tutorials about Pronto, I find that they're using them before, the, before I've even mentioned it, and which I love. It's really easy for them, even if it's not as easy for you. 
It also humanizes the remote and online environments and it invites and motivates students to participate. And then it has multiple features such as live stream, chat, groupings, and tasks, et cetera. Okay, so I wanna show you a sample interaction not prompted by me. We had gotten pronto on a sample basis just after the pandemic started. And what was great is I hadn't even talked to my students about it at all. Like I didn't even have a chance. I was going to, and we weren't there quite yet. And this is just a screenshot of a sample interaction, not prompted by me, where a student was saying, I'm feeling great. I'm a little sad about the shift online, but it's for the better, how are you? And, and notice you can use emojis and, and you can also share um, memes and GIFs and, and all sorts of things, files with each other. And, and students were already, three different students got on without any prompting from me. And they were actually just checking each other out to see how everyone was doing, which I thought was really beautiful. We have two different tutorials. I, Lynn created a teacher tutorial, which is actually located in online teaching resources. And I have it linked here. And if you are already in the online teaching resources, you can go here and it's a step by step of how for you to get set up and using it, okay? So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time showing you this step by step, but this was designed with you in mind and how you can use it both on your phone and also through um, Canvas, okay? I like to use Pronto through my phone. That's my favorite way to use it. But sometimes, you know, teachers wanna get things set up on Canvas and that's fine. I have created a student tutorial where I share and notice just in case those of you have uh, attended my accessibility workshop, I'm gonna get rid of the underlines here. I told you I've had some underlines I need to get rid of still. Here's one I need to get rid of, but either which way, um, I have a little overview here about what it is and what they can do with it how they can sign up, what it looks like, how to begin using it. And I also have some visuals here so that I can help them use it. And I have a video at the bottom. So I have a visual as well. So you can look at my visual in addition to the ones that um, Lynn set up for teachers. And I also have some pronto netiquette and I spend a little bit of time making sure that I copy and paste this when I start to have them use it because I want them to know that there are certain expectations that I have. And then I have some pronto tutor uh, video tutorials. I have one that I created uh, with a student who agreed to do it with me. And sometimes I like to skip to the videos and so, you know, you can go ahead and skip to the video and take a look. And then here's a Pronto video tutorial with someone who works at Pronto. So here, you know, if you're somebody that's really visual, you may want to go to the, the video tutorials first. Okay. I would also like to share with you that Pronto put together a quick start checklist of things to do. So how to get students started organizing groups and what is fantastic about Pronto is that you can create groups in Canvas and those groups will automatically show up for students who are part of them in Pronto. So you can ask students to please get into their Pronto groups and have a live chat or a, a, a text chat so that they can actually uh, work on their own on some something. So it takes a little, you know, you can't just set up the groups and then expect it to work right away. You should set up the groups maybe five or six hours ahead of time or the day before. And then if you want to give students something to do where they're practicing using Pronto with something in their groups, then you can, you know, give it, you know, give it a little bit of time and then have them practice using it. 
you should communicate your expectations of what you expect Pronto to be used for and what you hope for them to use it for. And then you can also schedule some live sessions and office hours. Now I use Zoom for office hours, but sometimes you could decide to use the chat function or you could decide that you're going to be on Pronto where you have, you know, have it on your phone and have it ready to go so that you can let students know I'm going to take students on a one by one basis and have them join you on pronto for a chat session instead of using zoom and in fact you could have it be where maybe zoom is your automatic place for office hours but that if zoom doesn't work that pronto will be the next place that you go to that's a plan b some teaching tips it says be present but at the same time, you are not expected to be online 24 seven. I've had students send me a pronto message in the middle of the night before while I'm sleeping, I have my volume off. And um, so I don't respond to that. So you don't need to be online 24 seven. And you may want to let them know, you know, I, I will be checking pronto usually, you know, during this time frame, if you want to give them those, you know, sorts of parameters. You really want to encourage peer to peer support and I find that this is really at the heart of pronto I want students to help one another. And there are times when I can't like students ask me a question on pronto but i'm not able to respond because i'm in the middle of something else. And what I find is other students will jump on and then they start having a conversation independently of me. And when I come on, I'll say that was that was correct. Great. Thank you so and so for jumping in. And I let them know I want to encourage you to please uh, do that whenever you can that if I'm not on and you know the answer to something, please step in and answer. You can share files as you go. Um, there may be something nice that you would like to share with your students. It's very easy to share it in pronto. You can create a quick little video chat where you demonstrate or explain maybe you're, you know, not everybody's on canvas, but you can say, hey, I'm going to be on pronto in 10 minutes and I'm going to talk about XYZ because I've gotten several questions on it. If you can join me great and you can actually record it and save it for those students who can't join you. You can assign students to lead discussions. You can reach out and say, hey, is everything okay via um, Pronto? And again, a reminder is being human. Students wanna see that we're human, that we're real people, that we laugh, we, you know, we cry, we are there, we have frustrations just like they do. And especially when we're online, this is a wonderful way to get them to see your personality. And I wanna share that when we had our initial Pronto session with uh, the with the people that worked at Pronto, this was before the pandemic. We had it set up before. And one of the reasons why we were attracted to Pronto is that there is a teacher at Glendale College who uses Pronto to live, live stream her classes so that if students are out sick, they can join in on, on the phone. And it doesn't mean that she's talking to the students she just has a a tripod set up she puts her phone on it and she runs class and then students can see things and they don't miss out if they have to be absent because they're sick and a lot of times i found that students will um they will come to class even when they are sick when i've told them please don't come to class if you have a fever or if you're vomiting, you know, some of these, you know, uh, type A students who want to do so well, this is an opportunity for them to use Pronto and see the class this way instead. And in fact, that's my plan is when we get back to cam campus, I'm going to make that a regular habit. And it doesn't mean that they get credit for attendance either. So students can't use it as a way to miss class and not be there that you know they're still going to be marked absent but they don't have to miss things by coming to the prompt by coming you know seeing what's going on in class all right yeah. so yes if we allow students to use pronto do we need to monitor them 
If we find inappropriate in interaction, can we delete that message or even block the user? Yes, we can. You can go in, and if you are finding that there's problems on Pronto, you can go in on the back end, and you can manage, you know, those kinds of conversations. But I find that if you have the, and I'm sorry, my dog is going nuts in the background. She's locked away and she's not happy about it. Sorry about that. But what I have found is that you can set up the expectations in the first place. That's really an important step so that you don't, um, so that students know what they expect. But yes, you can go on the back end and delete certain things. The one exception though is through groups. If you're not part of their group, then you're not gonna see the interactions that are going on. I will share with you though, that I have not noticed this being an issue. And in fact, because we've set it up in, in such a way, um, most people are not finding this to be a problem. But I think being proactive is really key here and setting up a positive atmosphere. But yes, if there's an issue with a student, you can definitely stop, you know, be on the back end and, and, and do that. And in fact, I have a help um, link in case you have any specific questions with Pronto, like you have a very specific question and you cannot find it in my tutorial or Lynn's tutorial, there, there's a help that you, you can email and get some support right away with your own specific issue with Pronto. Any other questions, Monique? Yes, we have one more. How can we disable Pronto? Students are using it during exams to exchange information. Okay, so I just wanna share with you that you can go, there is a way to go in and, dis and disable it during test taking time. I do wanna share with you that Pronto though is not the only way where stu students can cheat. They can share phone numbers and, and, and share information that way. But yes, you can decide that you're not going to use the group function in Pronto if you don't want to. You can disable all of that during the time where you uh, take do the tests. And I will, I don't know that I have it here, but I will send a little tutorial along with this. I'll put a tutorial in about how to disable during test taking time. So you can disable it, yes. And then enable it again. Okay. All right. And we have another question. All right. Will we see all student communication or can they privately communicate to one another? They can privately communicate to one another message on message, but if you are having a, yeah, I've had students privately communicate to me. So yes, you can privately communicate, um, but again, you can disable uh, Zoom, or excuse me, Zoom, you can disable Pronto during test taking times if you'd like, yeah. But yes, it, it can be one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Yeah. And that again, oh, go ahead. Could you show us how we could organize groups on Pronto? The, the way you organize groups on Pronto is the same way you organize groups in Canvas. That's how you organize the groups. So when you go to Canvas, you can click on people and you can organize groups that way. I will show you just to, on here as an example, I'm gonna go to people. And that's where you organize the groups. You don't do it directly in Pronto, you do it in Canvas, which is what's great. So you can go to groups here. And I'm, I, I'm gonna just show you how to do it, but then you can, um, you can do it on your own and you can do a variety of groups. It doesn't have to be all the same group. So I'm gonna click on plus group set and you can split, you can create the groups manually or you can split the groups into, let's say I'm gonna put a hundred here and you can allow for self sign up. You, you name the group set. So you wanna make sure that if you're gonna change groups over time, which I do, I like to do a different group during every unit. You can just say, you know, you can call it a fun name or whatever it is and you can create these groups manually or you can split it into so many people per group. 
Um, you can also automatically assign a, a student group leader or set the first student to join as the group leader. And once you set up the groups here, a number of hours later, Pronto will um, reset and it will actually um, allow you to, it, then you'll see the groups there within Pronto. So I have it as 100 groups because we have so many, but um, I'm not gonna set up the groups. But once you, it's, it's just the same way you would do it. And then um, they're available there in Pronto. All right, and then we have one last question. So even though we can disable Pronto during exam taking, if the students have groups that does not include the instructor, can the students still communicate with their groups? Even they can, though yes, yes, they can. Yep, they can. So you have to think about whether or not you want to do that. And there's also, I, you know, I was talking the other day with McLena there's a way to set up tests where there's various um, groups of questions. And I actually have a little video here that I want to share. McLena, did you have a chance to look at that video yet? There's a video about developing question groups in Canvas. Oh yeah, I was responding. I, I forgot I was on mute. <laughs> Yes. Was it was this video helpful? Did it help you learn what you um, need to learn in terms of grouping or not really? Well, I plan to look at it tonight. I mean, OK. All right. Yes, sorry. Thank you. So I'm going to I'm going to act because people might be interested. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to share it. I'm going to put the link in the chat. But this is an alternative way where you can possibly have different, you know, questions of groups. Uh, groups of questions for your tests. There we go. Janet, right. we do have some more questions, but I'm going to wait to ask them so that way you can continue with the PowerPoint. Thank you. Thank, I appreciate that. And, and this is the thing, not all your questions are going to be asked here because, because you have to have an opportunity to practice using Pronto. Like I said, it, for me, it's always easier to use my phone using Pronto. And so one of the things that I recommend is that you download Pronto on your phone and you sign into Pronto using the same sign in as you do via Canvas. Okay. So that's really important that, you know, really important thing. And then you can practice using it. And in fact, students, if you want to ask students, hey, you know, you're in a Zoom session or you want to send an announcement, hey, I, you know, I'm learning how to use Pronto. Who would like to practice with me? And you'll have a few students who want to practice with you. They'd love to help. They love to be able to help. The, they would love to be able to help you learn how to use Pronto. In fact, Lynn and I practiced using Pronto, and then I practiced it with students. And so it's it's this sort of trial and error. So I don't you know I don't want you to you know think that you have to be really good at it. It just you know takes some takes some practice. Okay, so. In terms of, I have some potential options for interaction where you can, you know, post a general question about an assignment or an upcoming test. You can seek or provide clarification about anything related to class. You can share something super cool or an article or a video about something that they're learning. You can have them study together or gather in person. Uh, on their own, you can share an experience directly connected to a topic. You can help each other by answering each other's questions. And I have to tell you, more than once, I've had students go, aren't there office hours right now? She's not on yet. <laughs> I go, thank you. I, you know, it's a, a nice little reminder that I am missing whatever it is I told them I was going to do. And so Pronto has been a good little reminder for me as well. Um, potential pronto netiquette. I like to be, you know, the idea about being respectful. Don't reveal information about somebody else. You know, you can do a private message, but I also like to remind them that this is an academic environment, that we're here to support each other and to avoid anything that communicates superiority of one group over, over another or proselytizes about certain um, ideas, you know, that you shouldn't be, you know, you should vote for Biden, you should vote for Trump, you know, that kind of thing. This is not what this is for. There's other groups that they can do outside of school for that. 
I'm in terms of troubleshooting. My camera is not working on the computer and there's some information about before signing in there's specific canvas class for the first time you have to you know you need to go here again how do groups work you create groups on canvas and then wait and they'll work but you have to give you know pronto uh, time to sync them okay in terms of captioning pronto hopes to add live captioning in the future but doesn't have it now you can record download then upload to youtube or can't or Canvas Studio and use their captioning. I had a student last semester who was hard of hearing and I had another student who live captioned for him very, it was a very, you know, and he did a great job actually doing that. You know, you have a couple of superstar students who are really fast in terms of um, sending that information. How do you opt out of notifications? Here are some instructions about opting out of those. And what if my screen goes into in infinity and you don't know what that is, but you could get to that, you can now nav navigate into a different tab. So here's some troubleshooting uh, ish, you know, troubleshooting guidelines here. Um, Steve, are you here yet? There we go. I am. You are. So what I'm going to hey. do, hi, thank you so much for joining us. And I am doing this for you because I want people to see your greatness here. So I'm just letting you know that. Um, you I'm definitely gonna... I'd have to bring greatness. I think I'm going <laughs> to log on. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now, Steve, is I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that you can share yours. And we're going to take some time out and we, you know, we meet till 12 and you take as much or as little time as you would like. And again, Monique, if you could still monitor the chat, we would appreciate it. Thank you so much, cool. Steve. My right. pleasure. Uh, Janet, did um, you share with the group the um, guide to using Pronto to create videos? I did, but I didn't go through it step by step. So if, okay. you, if I, you are able to do that, that would be lovely. I didn't open it up, but let me see if I can find it real fast. Um, do that. Well, I'll do that in a second. Uh, I'm going to jump into share screen. Here, hang on, just before I do that. I know. I wasn't sure if you guys <laughs> had access to that or not. So I'm gonna jump in, find that document real quickly. Uh, basically, Lynn and Janet introduced me to Pronto this summer and, uh, or, or I guess maybe it was last spring. Um, and I just found it fantastic because it allows students to text each other and to text me. Um, whether in groups or individually without having phone numbers. So we retain some privacy, but also have the ability for that contact, that regular contact, especially at a time when we don't have classroom contact with them, um, which you know can make some of them quite anxious, especially for brand new freshmen. Um, I'm just looking for that app, but also for you know, students who've been here for two or three semesters or more, um, they, uh, in this unusual situation that we're in, often find it to be a little alienating uh, that they don't have an instructor right there. So if they can shoot me a quick text and, uh, and in that quick text can get some quick support, some quick feedback, um, it, it really does change things for them in some kind of radical ways. So I've got it up. Let me share screen. Well, before I share this, yeah, let me share the screen. Um, there we go. But before I share this, let me just jump into Pronto because a lot of the times we're using it just for messaging, right? I tend on my phone and on my tablet to have notifications come up so that I can see the notifications. Uh, I don't have any alarms or sound related to it, and I can either you know track what they're doing, respond right away, or know that they reached out and respond when it's appropriate. Um, sometimes, especially if they're in a group, as I've got them set up often in groups, um, when they ask a question, I'll intentionally wait a bit because one of their other classmates will often jump in and answer the question for them. And I keep saying to them, look, I know it feels like you have to be totally independent in this new learning environment that we're in, 
but we are looking at building ways to be interdependent, to help each other, to guide each other. And I'll jump in and help as well, but I want you guys to, to be able to rely on each other for support as well. And they've really liked that. The, many of them um, who are successful really, really like that. Some uh, like this, this is my American Lit uh, class, my 200 level class, um, are arranging for a video chat. I think that class is not a writing class. So I think we've got eight or nine video chats where three or four of them get together on Pronto and, and I'll show you how to do that and create a video chat so that they actually have time to do some small group work, some, some talking together about things that they're working through um, before we actually meet on Monday morning. This is the only class that I've uh, kept as a um, remote class. So we meet just one day a week for an hour and a half on Zoom so we can talk about ideas related to our readings and assignments. Um, but this is the only one of my other classes are all online and they're also doing these video chats and it gives them a chance to at least virtually on computer connect with other people to see a face or at least to see a name if they don't want to put their faces up there um, and to feel like they aren't completely isolated in the classroom. So these are students without my guidance. I've, I've told them to include me in the groups so I can assist if they run into technical issues. And I see all these, I get the messages that they're all sending these each other these notes. Some mornings I'll wake up and there are 40 um, notifications. I don't have to go through the 40. All I have to do is click and see if they were asking for any help from me. If they were having a conversation and everything's good, then that's it. I don't have to, to do anything more. Sometimes, like a student who was trying to submit her essay last night, her English 100 student trying to submit her essay, the essay asked them to do a personal uh, narrative and they could choose a couple of different versions. She wanted to try two shorter narratives to work out ways to uh, apply for transfer admission to the UCs for their uh, personal statements. But in creating two, she tried separate, uh, submitting two separate documents to Canvas and realized that once she submitted one, she couldn't submit the other. So she was freaking out a little bit and I just told her, don't worry, delete the old file and then put the two separate narratives in one document, upload that. And basically this is a way for me to touch bases with her when she ran into an issue and to reassure her that we could figure this out as opposed to having a student maybe email, which you know I see at some point. So it's not so different, but a lot of times students run into roadblocks like this. I can't submit the file, or I can't submit both. So I guess I'll just get 50% credit and they just disappear. Um, this makes it far more immediate for us to be able to talk and, and ha have them work through problems that, um, that for some students might cause them to feel a little bit alienated. Steve, can you stay there for one second? And oh, sure, let me go sorry, back. Sorry about that. I had no, one no question words. for you because I did not know this. This was something Lynn and I were trying to, to tackle. So how did they add you to their groups? What did they have to do to add you to their own Pronto groups? You know, it's, it's pretty simple. And now in, in all of my classes, I created the first round of groups. I just created them randomly. Right. So because I created them, I was in the group already. But um, I'm trying to see if I can't raise my browser. There we go. So when I'm creating a new group, I'm just going, I don't know if you can see it. It's just barely visible on mine because of the bottom menu bar. Um, but I'm going into a new group. I'm clicking on the green plus sign. And I'm going to create a group. And now because I'm creating the group as the creator, I'm already in here. But once they're creating the group, once they've named it, if they attach it to our class as a category, they just add me as a person in the group. So I show up as one of the people when they click add people, they pop me in the group. I have had some groups who have said, oh, we can't upload our video. And I have to say to them, but I don't see a video there. I don't see that you've, oh, we didn't add you. Well, add me so I can help you. And then they start to realize, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we need to put him in the group as well because if we've run into a glitch or a problem or issue or something, we wanna make sure he's there to help. So that's so this is interesting, Steve. I'm really glad you showed us this because the way we've been we were taught to use groups in Pronto was to create them through Canvas. And if they're created through hmm. Canvas, then we can't be necessarily part of them unless we're a student. But if you create them through Pronto, you can be part of the group. So I think that that's the better way to go. Thank you. That yeah, no, I, I haven't great. created them through Canvas at all. Um, I just go straight through and my guidelines for students are to do to do it in Pronto. Um, 
And in, in that case, they can include anyone in the group. Um, and I set up their groups or, or I ask them to create their own. Um, but yeah, every time I say, please put me in the group, I really wish Pronto um, would automatically put uh, faculty in the groups whenever students create them, at least as a, um, you know, somebody in the background who can troubleshoot. Uh, I know one of the concerns was um, whether students would create groups and, and cheat um, in those groups. I haven't gotten any indication that that's happening, but then again, mine are all um, writing classes by and large. So they're submitting things through Canvas to turnitin.com and I can see, I can manage their writing and see what they're doing. Um, I, I do wish Pronto would, would add faculty automatically to their classes groups. It doesn't do that yet. So I just emphasize to students that when you create a group, add me to it, make sure I'm a member of that group. Right, well, can Canvas doesn't, that's the hard thing. Is right. Canvas did, Pronto might be able to do it automatically, but thank you so much. That was actually sure. very useful. And again, I wanna to emphasize to people that you can disable Pronto during test taking times. So you can do that. All right, thank you, Steve, mm -hmm. go ahead. Thanks. Sure, absolutely. Sorry, I just wanna ask you really quick. Do you want Please. questions at the very end of your presentation or would you like it in between? Uh, I'm, I'm open to whatever you guys would like, whatever okay. helps. If you want to wait, fine. If you want to jump in while we're on a page, it might be more helpful for you. So I'm, okay. I'm cool either way. So let me just go ahead and ask. You have two questions. The first one is, can we know all groups in the class if we are not added? No. Students can create a group and not add you, and you don't know that that's a group in Pronto. If you're doing it in Canvas, you do. But if you're doing it in Pronto, because they have access to create the groups with this little green plus sign, um, they can create a group. And if you, they don't add you, you wouldn't know it's a group. They're communicating on their own. So okay. there, there is that with Pronto. Okay, so the second question is from Edwin. It says, the last question is interesting. My students set up a Discord network to communicate between themselves. I am not included in this group. However, I also do use Pronto. So, yeah, um, they they in terms of the groups, they have to actually include you in the group, which is why I do wish Pronto. If, if there's any one flaw I've seen in Pronto, it's that if students in your class are creating groups, it would be beneficial, I think, for for the instructor to be able to lurk basically in the background to be automatically there. Um, just in case, um, just in case in a variety of different ways, but students can create their own groups. Um, the, basically, unfortunately, Pronto has only two options, creating groups is on or creating groups is off, and that's kind of it, as I understand it. Any other questions? So the, the chat, the, the ability to use this for messaging is very helpful, but really it's not the primary way I'm using it. Mostly when students are there is to reach out to me or to each other or to plan their group project. And several times during the semester, eight or nine times in my American Lit class because it's not a writing class. So I want them to engage with the ideas, with the readings. Um, I think four times in my um, critical thinking argumentative writing class during the semester, in five times in my freshman composition class, I want students to be able to engage with each other to talk out ideas. So in those cases, I'm having them get onto Pronto, start a video, they arrange a time between themselves. Let me go back and show you what this other group is working on. Um, there we go, this one. Basically, they, they know by the end of the day tomorrow, and they've got all of the video chat schedule in their, their weekly schedule for the whole semester. So they get online and they start talking out when is a good time for the three or four of us to meet. They, they settle on a time when they can meet, they all get onto Pronto and, um, and they record their video. And in doing that, once they do that, they spend 10 or 15 minutes, I give them the questions, I give them the guidelines for their video. They then meet, somebody hits record and they record these really wonderful little group, small group conversations that they then post to the discussion assignment in Canvas. Steve, we can't hear. Can you stop? Oh, you can't hear. 
can you stop sharing and then reshare again? And when you go to share, there's two buttons at the bottom that you click on and then we should be able to hear it. Let's see. So I'm There'll be two share. choices. Oh, share, hear sound, gotcha. Yes, thank you. Share and share, there we go. Cool, let's see if that works. Can you all see it again? All, all good? So here are four of my students in my American Lit class talking about Nathaniel Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter. What are you doing? This is awful. We need to take her away so she can be raised better. I think that's awful. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a good, funny that you brought that up because it's like even through other readings, we've kind of encountered that, you know, like women are always supposed to be the ones to raise the kids. And like they're supposed to be the ones that stay at home with them and literally raise them while like the men just like go out and provide for the family. But it's like in an instance where the man isn't there, they're like, oh, you can't take care of the kid. Like you, you're not fit enough. You can't. I'll stop it there. You get the idea um, that uh, they are able to talk out their ideas. And then once they've created their videos and they posted their video, other students can go in watch the video, and then write their responses to the videos as they're seeing what other groups are talking about. So several students chose this video to respond to, and then as we go down, there's another group's video, and there are other students who are responding to this group's video. So they get to not only create their videos where they're talking with each other, they also have a chance to, um, to watch others' videos and, and really develop new ways of thinking about the texts that we're working on as we're exploring those ideas. What I've done, and I think Janet either is going to share it with you, I can't remember if you said you were or if you did already, is to create a step-by-step -step guideline, basically, for using Pronto. So I say to students, in terms of creating their groups, here's how to do it. Here's the, gui the guidelines that I set up for them. Um, and basically, it's just a 10-step guideline. They're going to start by creating that group, clicking on that green plus side, they're gonna name the group. I indicate, make sure that either I've got a fake student account and an instructor account, as long as they include one of those um, in, in their group so that I can help them if they run into problems to add that to the group. Give them the screenshot in terms of how to create the group. Now, this is assuming I haven't created the group for them already. Once they've created their group, they set up a time to meet. And when they're ready to meet, they click on the video uh, uh, image on Pronto and click on the, the like on it. Looks like a video camera to start the video when they're ready to talk. When they're all in camera, they'll see a little record button. They just make sure they click that record button in Pronto. They click the record button, they're live. And once they've spent 10 or 15 minutes, some of them really just go on. They start talking and they go on for 20, 25, almost 30 minutes in one case. I've had to say, guys, I have to watch all these. So make sure you're not going on forever. Um, but uh, they're in for 10 or 15 minutes. They click the live button to end the video. And at that point in their Pronto stream, their, their thread, uh, discussion thread, they'll see this little icon that says live stream has ended and they can replay it. They click on replay and they download the video. So once they've downloaded the video, and only one group member has to do this, they can all choose to do it. In some groups, they all do it, and I get four copies of the same video on Canvas. In other groups, one person says, oh, I'll do it, no worries. They download the video, and then I just give them guidelines step-by-step. Step. Go to Canvas, to our discussion post, click on this little icon in the discussion post. All I want you to write in terms of text are the names of the three or four students in the video. Click on the little icon in the discussion post. Choose Canvas Studio, which is wonderful. And then they're going to add their video as a studio video, right? They find the video that they've saved on their tablet or on their laptop. They click on Add, and they upload it. They can turn off comments or turn on comments. It's up to them either way. But I tell them they click on Embed, and back in Canvas, they'll see the video appear just as it did here, and they know they're, they're, they're all set to go. So it's a, it's a pretty straightforward 10-step process in which they can go in, create these videos, upload the videos, and, uh, and, and be able to share their conversation, having talked with each other about what they know so far or where they're confused. 
um, to share those videos with the rest of the class. Um, comments, thoughts, ideas? Well, Steve, everybody wants a copy of it. So if you're able to, <laughs> if you're able to share it in the chat, that would be great. Um, um, let me see if I can. I'm not on my home computer. Um, I'm on my, well, I should be, I'll try to do that. If I can't do that, I will um, send you a copy. Is it the same, same thing? Yeah, I haven't changed it at all. All right. And I'll try right, to share it right. in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, this is great. And, you know, Steve, I was, I was sharing with people at the very beginning I have wanted to do this. I have not had any time. And I'm so grateful though that you have because, and you've had some time now to actually do it and make it a regular assignment. So I wanna ask this so that people hear, how many times are you having students do this throughout the semester? And how often are you changing the groups? In the writing classes, because um, they are doing so much writing, I don't want to, I didn't want to put too much of a burden on them. So typically it's once per essay. So we've got typically five essays during the course of the semester. So at least one time in the development of those essays, once every three weeks, I want them to meet and to have these video chats, these, these ways to talk about their ideas, their readings, and ideally to help each other start planning out ideas for their essays. In the American literature class, because it's not a writing class, um, they're doing shorter writing assignments with only one larger writing assignment and then midterm and final. I have them getting in, oh, we're in a 15 week class. So there are eight, eight or nine times during the semester when they're doing the video conversations because I want them to be able to take the novel or the poem or the short story or play that they're reading and get in with other people live and be able to play with those ideas, to chat about those ideas. So it varies class by class. I should also note that in every case in all of those classes, first, I make sure that students know that if they're having any issues, whatever they are, technical or otherwise, um, to let me know in advance. If a student is having Wi-Fi issues and can't log in, um, doesn't have the technology available, we'll find other options for that student. And at the same time, they are all pretty low stakes. Um, these are, uh, most of our discussion posts are worth 10 points. Our essays, maybe it's 100 points. Um, these are five points a piece. So they're really low, low stakes so that if a student misses one or two, it's not a crisis. But I find that once they've got groups and they know that the groups are going to be there, they tend not to miss. They tend to, to, to feel like somebody's relying on them to be there. Rather than miss, more often what happens is that they'll get on to Pronto and send a message to the group saying, you know, I can't make 1.30 today after all, I've got to take my mom to the doctor or something. Could we change times? And they all work together to find a new time that all three or four members can actually meet online. So they problem solve pretty well in, in, in finding ways to do it. Fantastic. And may I ask for one other document, maybe as a could you share maybe a sample with us, even if you don't share it right now, could you share it so that I could share it with the group at large of, this is an example assignment that I've given them, such as the sure. scarlet letter assignment. That way they see sort of the parameters that you've set up because, I, I, because this is fantastic. I love this assignment so much because it puts the onus on them for finding the time, but you notice that they're all very vested in the content and then other people get to hear everybody else's conversation. Whereas in a Zoom breakout room, you don't get to hear those conversations. You're only hearing your own. So right. even in a face-to-face -face scenario, I envision using this assignment as homework where sure. we're gonna be doing this more because again, they can only hear what's going on in their own group. So this is really great, Steve. It's fantastic. been fun. It's, and it's been fun for me because I get to see them. I get to, to see actual faces as well. I've had one or two. It's interesting because I do in the, in the American Lit class, I do a once a week Zoom class. Um, and then I have three hours, office hours for everybody. In the Zoom class and in the office hours, more often than not, they're hiding their faces. They're putting up you know, a, a static photo or their names are appearing, but that's it. Um, in only one case that I can recall in these Pronto videos, they aren't hiding their faces. They're getting in and talking with each other because it's just the four of them. It's not 30 students in, in the Zoom class. Um, I think there was only one who blacked out 
his image that you know, just didn't show it. It was just a black square. <clears throat> and then I, I think they were talking about um, young Goodman Brown, the Hawthorne story about witches in the middle of the night. And I told them I felt like I was being haunted by that disembodied voice um, because it didn't even have a name on it. So I had to find out who the student was. But by and large, when it's just three or four of them, they're willing to, sh to show themselves. And when I'm not in the video, they're willing to show themselves and talk with each other. I'm um, having difficulty connecting um, Zoom with my Google Drive account. So Janet, I'll email you the how-to step-by-step guide and also a sample assignment. And um, you can share that with the group. Fantastic. And I will do that. Thank you so much, Steve, for coming. Sure. It was so worth it. My pleasure. To see an example of all of this. And I know that some of you, again, I want to share that I know that I didn't I did not go through the step by step because I have the tutorials there. And what's gonna happen is you actually need to sit with the instructions and sit with your phone and or your computer and just do it and practice it. And again people are willing to practice with you. And in fact, you have the capacity to do this through the online teaching resources because you're all students as part of this. So you could set up your own groups there. So, you know, I encourage you to do that. So thank you so much. We're still gonna do something else. You're welcome to stay with us, Steve, or not, it's up to you. But I just wanna, you know, say thank you. This was fantastic. It was- My so pleasure. Good <laughs> luck, have fun with it. And by all means, if you're trying this out and you have any questions, feel free to email me directly. Thank you cool. so much, Steve. That was have great. Fun. Thank you. All right, everybody. So we actually, the, the last little troubleshooting that I wanted to share with you is, how can I choose? And I'm sorry, my dog is going nuts in the background. I apologize about that. Um, how can I choose which classes show up in the app? So there, sadly, this can be difficult, but there is an actual place where you can go and do that. And I want to add that to my actual, <laughs> my actual slide. I'm going to put a little note here to remind me that I need to do that because that's new. I need to add that here. All right, so now I wanna to get to the point where we're gonna talk about sharing some ideas that you might use. Like Nick already started out by saying, this would be great, I'd love to use this for debate. And so I do have a link in the presentation which you can go directly to. And I also have a link here, ideas for using Pronto. I actually created this for the Pronto group that I'm with already. And so this was sort of my initial brainstorm of ideas. And it also includes this Google slideshow and some other things about how to in introduce it during the orientation. Any tool that I'm gonna use during my classes, I always introduce during the orientation. And then I have a place where I'm gonna ask you to please contribute. I'm gonna put you into small breakout rooms. We'll only do it for a few minutes. If you have questions about Pronto, you have answers.